What is up guys, Coach Joe Garage De La Swole, and in this video we're going to be covering how to break through squat PR plateaus and get you squatting some insane amount of weight. Let's go! I said in the intro, we're going to be covering how to break through squat plateaus. Now the video you just saw is me squatting 725 and then also just barely missing 750, which would have been an all-time PR. And I just call that a future training PR because I know down the road I'll be able to hit that. Now this video is kind of based off the last video that I did, but that was for the strict press and I'm having fun making these videos because no matter where you're at, whether that's kind of beginner, intermediate, advanced, or if you're just stuck in any of those experience levels, I know some of these tips are gonna hit home for you and hopefully you will start smashing through any PR that's in your way by using these principles and methods. Now some points that I talked about in the press video are gonna carry over to the squat video and some are gonna be different. So if you guys haven't already checked out the press video, Link is above right here. Make sure you go and watch it if you're somebody who's having trouble with the strict press or any press for that matter and you want to bust through that plateau. So let's dive right to it. Now the first tip when it comes to just getting better at the squat or potentially breaking through a plateau is going to be tidying up your technique. Now just like the press where people may say, oh, it's super simple. All you have to do, Coach Joe, is just squat down and stand back up. All right, we're, we're guys, just, just go to another channel. I'm tired, I'm tired of that. Because as you know, these lifts, although they may seem simple in nature, they are complex and all have specifics to the technique that could make or break your lift. And when it comes to technique, the way we get better at it is just more and more reps. And then fine tuning those reps over time or finding where our weak point is or a part of our squat that needs to be tidied up. So I'm gonna talk about a few of them that have really been a game changer for me and hopefully they will be a game changer for you. And I do wanna say, I'm not gonna tell you which way to squat, right? We have high bar, low bar, all different types of barbells that we can use. So find what works best for you and also make sure you know what squat you want to test because that is going to be the foundation of how we structure all our programming around that testing squat that we're gonna use. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to the squat is actually the walkout. So when I first started squatting, I'd get under the bar, I'd take it out of the rack, and I probably walked two to three yards outside of the rack. And when you're squatting and it's lighter weight, that doesn't necessarily matter so much. Uh, however, as you get heavier, you know that every inch you step with that much weight on your back, uh, or just start fidgeting around, it's going to cost you. So one of the biggest things I started doing was getting a more routine walkout and tidying that up. So I'm a big advocate, if you can, by doing the walkout in either no steps, aka using a mono lift, or taking one to two step walkouts. And this is just enough space that you can clear your J cup safely and conserve as much energy as possible. From there, we wanna make sure obviously we get into our proper breathing and bracing, but the main point is, when you guys are trying to hit big numbers or hit PRs, you can't be wasting any energy. And I typically see that in the walkout, where we're taking too many steps, we're kind of pitter-pattering our feet around, uh, we're just moving, or we're just taking too much time before we actually squat, therefore we are wasting energy that we could be using towards hitting a new PR. The next biggest tip that really helped me get to that next level when it came to my squat was controlling the eccentric portion of the lift or the lowering portion of the lift. Now this can be dependent on different athletes and coaching styles, but what I found best that works for me is controlling the eccentric on the way down. I have found that not only do I get stronger by controlling heavy weight on the way down, uh, but also it really helps me dial in my technique and make sure everything's in place on the way down to have a successful 
uh, rebound or explosion from the bottom and stand up with that weight. Typically what I find is if I come out and I just drop right to the bottom, I don't breathe, I don't brace, I don't have everything in check that needs to be there to be successful on the ascend of the squat. So when I'm doing that, I do my walkout, I breathe, brace, get set. As I'm going down, basically I'm thinking in my head, okay, how is my back positioning? How are my knees, right? How is the weight distribution in my feet? Am I in my toes, am I in my heels, etc.? And I know as I'm going on the way down, if everything feels right and I'm kind of crossing off those check marks, I'm gonna be a lot more successful on the way up and have everything in place where it needs to be to be successful as I make my way up, uh, rather than just kind of plummeting down and just you know doing a quick send it up to the big guy upstairs and just hoping that I make it. I mean, it's still cool to say a big one to the guy upstairs because any help you can get, I'm an advocate for it. Another point when it comes to technique, and this kind of was mentioned in the beginning, is figure out what bar position is best for you, right? Do you want to be a high bar squatter? When you're doing high bar, how high up is, on your traps is it? If you're going to do low bar, right, where do we want that bar every single time? There's also a hybrid kind of in-between style. So play around with those, figure out what fits you best, what kind of works best with your leverages, how long are your legs, your torso, those types of things, and utilize those strengths to your squat, but also just ingrain good patterns of where that bar is every single time. So when you get under that bar, you know it's right where it needs to be, and there's no question about it. Last point when it comes to technique, and this one's kind of funny because it pertains more to me now than it did when I was starting, is mobility. And when I first started squatting, I was a lot lighter, I was probably leaner, uh, but I was also very mobile. So getting into a nice squat position for me was a lot easier. However, fast forward several years and kind of where I'm at now, I put on a lot of size, a lot of muscle, and I've gotten tight. Now, I'm only going to be as strong as my body and mobility allows me to express that strength. So for me, I got to start working on mobility a little bit more. So maybe my ankles are tight, maybe my hips are tight or my back, whatever. Uh, obviously, by doing the movement pattern of the squat itself over time, progressively putting on weight should get you into that position. However, sometimes that's not the case. So if you find that what's really restricting you to express your strength is your mobility, find specific drills that can help you get better mobility and express that strength, aka maybe loosen up the ankles, maybe your calves are tight, or maybe your hips just aren't feeling the way that they should be. So we need to make sure that we fix those little things so that when we're going under the bar ready to PR, that's not something that's gonna hold us back from truly showing how strong we truly are. All right, second tip, and this isn't for the conjugate guys who have their max effort days or the more advanced lifters who are working heavy singles. I'm talking to you, the newbie or the intermediate lifter that wants to max out all the time, and that's pretty much all you do. Here's the tip. Stop maxing out all the time. There we go. Said it before and I'll say it again, guys. You need to make sure that we have time to accrue volume in the proper rep ranges so that we can get stronger, right? If you go in Monday and test your squat, and then you go in Wednesday and test your squat, and then maybe you go in Friday and test your squat, chances are it's not going to change much. Maybe when you first start lifting, you're going to see those jumps, right? Those newbie gains. But once that phase is done, okay, we have to put our ego to the side and we need to get on some sort of program to accrue enough volume in the appropriate rep ranges to build our strength base. So if you're not already taking time to grow your strength base, now is the time that you need to start doing that. Seriously, start doing it. And here's the point in the video where I plug myself and my program. So if you guys are looking for somebody who does all the work for you, it's a no brainer. You just have to do what is said. Check out the link below for our programming apps or templates a la carte programs or one on one coaching with me where I literally do it all for you based on your goals, equipment, time constraints, schedule, etc. And you become a freaking beast. Let's get back to the regular video. It's hot as balls in here today. Oh my gosh. All right, so the last part of this is gonna be the programming talk, which I find a lot of you guys enjoy. So when it comes to squatting, and like say squatting is your main focus and main goal, that's what you wanna break through that plateau, I definitely advise squatting one to two times per week. 
probably two times per week is going to be the best sweet spot to really make progress. Now, if you're a power lifter, you're probably squatting three times per week, and that is just fine if you are getting results. What I want you guys to stop doing is if you're only squatting one time per week, and that's just a high or low bar squat or whatever you want to max, and you're not getting results, it's time for you to increase that frequency. Yes, Coach Joe, once again, talking about frequency, that's because it freaking works. So a quick example or layout of this would be on Monday, since it's the first day of my training block or whatever the first day for you is of your training block, we want to hit the squat because that's our main focus. Don't do the bench or the overhead press or the deadlift and then the squat later in the week. No, first day when you're fresh and ready needs to be your squat. You can put most amount of focus and energy into that lift so that's what it should be now from there maybe on day two or day three we want to squat again or do some sort of variation of the squat or also just some leg accessory work okay we need to increase that dose a little bit for the squat because that is going to help us grow so typically allow yourself 48 to 72 hours to recover once the legs are fresh hit them again there's no point in waiting all the way till next week to hit the legs again if they're already recovered. We can get in more volume, more training sessions to bring up that squat. Now on that second squat day, instead of doing the squat you wanna test, throw in a variation. I like doing variations that are gonna help me work on weak points. So a real common one is people either get stuck in the hole, right? Or maybe they get stuck halfway up. So what we could do is either some pause squats in the bottom, or maybe we do some box squats to help really get strong through that weak point of the squat. There are tons of different variations. You got tempo squats, front squats, banded squats, chain squats. You got different bars to squat with. So the assortment and gambit is for you to figure out what works best for you and your equipment constraints. But I highly recommend using that second day to get more squat volume in and work on your weak points. Now, another programming point that really helped me on both squatting my 725 back squat, also squatting five, 100 plus pounds for 17 reps was my off-season bodybuilding hypertrophy work. So if you guys are say five or six months out from when you want to test or you're looking at your programming from like a bird's eye view, give yourself anywhere from six to 12 weeks of hypertrophy training. For the legs, I find probably that eight to maybe 12 weeks is gonna be really beneficial because the legs are a bigger muscle group. So we wanna push them for a little bit longer to really reap the benefits. But when I was doing bodybuilding in the off season, twice per week, so two leg days, one was primarily gonna be a quad focus day. The second was primarily uh, hamstring or posterior chain focus days, but I still was squatting or doing some sort of squat variation on those days. I really felt that I got my strongest. And that was including things like hack squats or leg press, belt squats, doing unilateral work such as Bulgarians or even doing like leg extensions, lying hamstring curl work, etc. But that not only helped me build muscle, which then could be potentiated for strength later in strength box, also helped bring up weak points, targeting specific exercises for smaller muscle groups in the legs that transferred over when I did strength training, uh, but then also built my GPP. For example, when I squatted 500 plus pounds for 17 reps, I didn't really do much training specifically for that, but I was conditioned enough uh, to be able to do a set that long with that much weight, where if I wasn't as conditioned as I was, I probably had the strength, but I didn't have the lung capacity to do that. So. It does depend on your goals, um, what you wanna do, whether that's absolute strength or a high rep, high weight set. Uh, but I think if overall you're strong and conditioned, you can find a really good place between the both of them that's really impressive to most people. So once again, don't neglect the hypertrophy work in the off season. And I think a lot of strength athletes get stuck in that strength phase year round where they don't have the time to do the bodybuilding work and not only is that gonna help build up any of those weak points, get your cardio up, and then help with strength, it's also just a nice mental detox uh, for you to go in, change it up a little bit from that hardcore strength training, heavy weight, uh, and also allow your joints, ligaments, and tendons to heal as well. And you can get very creative when you're doing bodybuilding blocks 
uh, because you have so much access to different uh, exercises or machines to use when doing them. Now my last point when it comes to programming is knowing and understanding how that volume is affecting your body. If we are overdoing the volume and we're constantly fatigued and running our body into the ground, we're going to have to take a lot of deloads. We're gonna have a lot more setbacks than necessary. So I'm always an advocate of starting off with lighter amounts of volume and progressively overloading anywhere from that four to six week time frame, and then knowing when to take a deload. The deload is a necessary evil, but I either see people not training hard enough, right, and not getting stronger uh, because they're not pushing hard, or they're running themselves in the ground from the start of the program because they just have that, yeah, get after it mentality, sacrifice everything and gain nothing. Right, uh, so we wanna make sure that we find that happy medium where we have at least four to six weeks worth of training before we deload and can accrue the right amount of volume. But the only way to do that is to write your freaking numbers down and write down your biofeedback of how's your mood, right? How are your joints, ligament, tendons feeling? Uh, how is performance going, right? If we're kind of seeing it go up and then we see like a drop for, I wanna say over a week, we probably know it's time to deload. But if we're not getting those symptoms, you're probably not pushing hard enough. So the only way to do this, once again, is to track. Too many people aren't tracking their numbers, figuring out their, their metrics of are they fatigued, are they not fatigued, right? How much are we eating, for example? That's a whole other one. Nutrition's a whole other topic, but are you eating appropriately to your goals? Do you have enough fuel to push yourself the way you need to be, right? If we're, we have high stress demands with training and we don't have enough calories or energy to produce this, the recovery or the performance we need, well, that's a problem. So things to think about and consider, but these are kind of things that I had to do and get in check to break through those plateaus, hit those big weights uh, or hit those big sets with heavy weight uh, that really were, were just pivotal to my progress in the squat. Now this is the last one, it's kind of a bonus one. I, I wanna say it's a bonus because it's more towards advanced lifters and something that I'm finding. Listen guys, I've been lifting since I was 13 years old. I'm 31 now. And you know, I've put in my time, I have a, a somewhat of a legit resume of things I've accomplished. But what I have found is when you get to that advanced stage, it's actually the opposite of when you begin. When you're in the newbie and intermediate phase, higher frequency for the squat in general tends to work. Now, this is so contradicting. You're probably like, what the heck is going on? But some of you will understand where as you kind of get into that advanced or mastery type phase, you actually don't need to squat as much as you were in the past. You've ingrained so much technique and reps and muscle patterns that your body's pretty solid there. And that came to light to me when I hit my max PR for my squat I actually wasn't squatting that often. I was doing a lot more of leg accessories or variations, but since I had so much practice doing the squat, when I got under the bar, it was kind of just like riding a bike, right? It came right back, uh, but I was fresh in the sense that I had put so much time into doing variations or assistance or accessory work that I could bring up any weak points or tidy up any technical uh, inefficiencies that when I did squat, that's when I hit my PR. Now, for any of you who are not advanced or haven't been doing this for almost 20 years, that advice does not apply to you in the previous 15 minutes of this video was targeted to you. Uh, but when you look at, let's just say, big time lifters who've been around for a long time, they may not be squatting as much as they used to in the past, but they still can hit PRs. A lot of that comes with just muscle maturity or wisdom over time of programming, uh, but also just the years and years that they've done the lift where they can now allocate other time to other things that can make them a better lifter. So when they do go back and squat, maybe they need, I don't know, a week or two to kind of fine tune some things and get just comfortable under the bar. And it comes back very quickly that they can reap the rewards of all of that extra stuff that they were doing. So I'm not trying to totally flip your head upside down, which maybe I did, and like I said, disregard it. But as I'm getting older, it is true, and I even hear guys like Dave Tate talk about it, right? They've been around for forever, uh, where they may not be squatting as much as they were in the past, but they can still hit PRs. So 
Think about it. Now that is the conclusion of this long-winded video. I hope if you're somebody who's out there, whether you're just beginning and you're making some of these mistakes or you've heard some things that you can change up to kind of break through those plateaus or if you're intermediate or advanced, there was something in this video for you that you can fine tune and change around. And if not, I have an entire squat and legs playlist with a ton of videos you can go through that dive into the weeds when it comes to small technique issues or mobility issues or bodybuilding in the off season and ideas that you can try to really kind of put it all together to blow up that squat and hit your new PR. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't want to do any of the thinking and you're kind of like a robot like me where you have the program, you execute said program, you don't want to think or have paralysis by analysis, I do have a ton of programs once again in the link in the description which you can buy either a la carte or you can get the app which has access to over a year's worth of different programs that you can continually hop from one to the next getting better and better and better and then fine tuning and hit your PRs or you can do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me which is the whole shebang you get to talk to me pretty much every day or every other day uh, and I can be annoying but I will get you balls strong so Check out those links. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this. If you have other videos you'd like to see in this format, I will gladly do them. They're fun for me and they seem to be doing well, which means we're helping people and we're getting stronger together. So that's all I have, guys. Stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.